As in two, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pulling hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. According to the Holy Scriptures, Yahawashai, the son of the Most High, is set to bring immortality to the nation of Israel, the elect, via establishing the tabernacle of David, as we talk about the second coming of the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He is coming to take down this current world ruled by Esau, Edom, and establish a righteous kingdom, which is synonymous with the throne of David, that scriptural, which is a government that's going to run this world in righteousness. But now, he's risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in God shall all be made alive. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss what exactly are these heathen, all right? headed by the biblical Edomites afraid of, all right? And we're going to go into their plan to destroy the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, which is going to be fulfilled in the remnant in these latter days awakening, all right, in Judah and Ephraim, which is both southern and northern kingdom being reunited to establish what is known as the Tabernacle of David, all right, which will be fulfilled under Yahweh Shai in the throne of David being established on earth as it is in heaven. All right. Now, before we are beamed up into the heavens, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which is fulfilled. All right. In Judah and Ephraim, northern and southern kingdom. All right. Will be reunited. As a matter of fact. When we read. Okay. The book of Amos 9 and 11, it says, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and I will close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and build it as in the days of old. Now, in the days of old, as we'll show you, the tabernacle of David, okay, the throne of David represented all 12 tribes together on one accord ruling over the heathen all right as you continuously read this chapter it says that they may possess the remnant of edom all right and in the book of obadiah that explains their lands okay and of all the heathen which are called by my name saith the lord that do this it's yahweh in the name of yahweh shai that all of this will be done you see in the heathen in their lands belong to the most high for the purpose of his son, Yahweh Shai, and he is going to ultimately share, all right, 
of that rulership and that dominion of the heathen and the land, the whole entire planet Earth with us. See? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and the hill shall, uh, and all the hills shall melt, meaning all of the governments of this world are going to be, you know, rooted out, and the plowman will overtake the reaper. The plowman represents, all right, the slave. Let's read this in another version, all right, which that represents us. Okay, as you see here, the time will come, says the Lord, all right, well, the grain and the grapes will grow faster and they will be harvested. All right, now that's not um, breaking it down right. NIV, the days are coming, declares the door, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman. Okay, let's look up this word plowman. Okay. All right, harash is the Hebrew word, harash, to cut in, to engrave to be plowed, to be speechless, deaf, all right, to sow, all right, and that's speaking of the Israelites, to plow, all right, um, when you go into the uh, curses, we would ultimately have to work the land and not benefit from it, all right, but the days are coming, all right, where the plowman shall overtake the reaper, okay, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. So these heathen have benefited, all right, from the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from being in captivity, all right? It says, and I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, see, which that's going to be a physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that's going to be delivered, all right, which gets into our lesson of why we are seeing all of this talk all right, of the uh, Y chromosome being rooted out, this non-binary future, hacking, all right, humans, changing the D to the N to the is A. All of these talking points are associated with the prophecy, all right, here in Psalms 83. We'll go right back to that. Psalms 83 and 1. See, it's deeper than being called a nigger and a spick and a wetback, a, a moon cricket, a monkey. These people want to root out the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, so that ultimately the promise that was made to our fathers, the patriarchs, all right, which is passed down through the seed, all right, that will issue forth out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they want to cut that out of the earth. All right. And block everything associated with the promise that was given unto us as we have the birthright. And we're going to get into. All right. The plan that these devils have to do that. And what are they really fearing? As we've been raised up in these latter days. So we're calling on our power to keep not thou silence. O our power. Hold not thy peace. Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up a head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, man. This is a deep scripture, man. And what we're seeing happening all right, in the form of this NWO, all right, in this, this talking point of, you know, rooting out the patriarchy, this talking point of a non-binary future, all right, because binary deals with male and female, see? So when we see, as we'll get back to the scriptures we were going into, as we see talking points of the Y chromosome disappearing, right? We went into that, but uh, you can look up videos going into it. A male-less future. See, now what is the importance of that? 
All right. What is the importance of having a maleless future for these devils and their plans? Well, if there is a maleless future, all right, there will no longer at some point be a seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. Passed down through the loins because even the daughters of Israel all right, are Israelites because of their fathers, which deals with a patriarchy that's dealing with the male. All right. Who have both the X and the Y chromosome, the Y chromosomes importance, as you see here. The Y chromosome is important to the concept of patriarchy because it is the sex chromosome that this determines maleness, which has the seed, meaning that only males possess it. And it is passed directly from father to son, allowing for the tracing of male lineage through generations. OK. Which has historically been linked to the concept of. All right. Of paternal authority and inheritance. In many societies, thus contributing. All right. To the foundation of patriarchal systems, patriarchal systems. OK, let's go to the book of Acts, because this is a patriarchal system that we are. All right. A part of. This is the book. Of Acts seven and eight. And he gave him, speaking of Abraham, the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. All right. Which Jacob's name was changed to Israel. This is why we are Israelites. See, in the promise that was made. All right. To that seed. All right. Will be given to the descendants on down the line. All right. Through the loins of their fathers. See. The word patriarch. All right. The word patriarch. Let's get it here in the Greek. Patriarchs. Patriarch, founder of a tribe, progenitor of the 12 sons of Jacob founder of the 12 tribes of Israel and you have a bunch of confusion even in Israel all right that the seed does not determine the nationality or the race well any of you who are still stuck on that be stuck on that man we're just going to tell the truth according to the father because it's going to be a seed all right of Abraham Isaac and Jacob as we see here Isaiah 45 and 19 all right I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I have not said to the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Isaiah 65 and 19. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains and mine elect shall inherit it. All right. And my servant shall dwell therein. Let's look up this word seed. Okay. Let's look up this word seed in the uh, Hebrew. All right. And Lord willing, this lesson flows because basically what we're getting ready to go into is the tabernacle of David. OK, is what they fear. All right. Ultimately uh, being rebuilt, which is why over the years you've noticed this infatuation, these Edomites and all of these nations have had with the rods and the ball sacks of the Israelite man. All right. And ultimately, when you when you deal with it, OK, they've put malt liquor into the neighborhoods. They put all of these foods. OK, uh, in, 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 in different, uh, you know, chemicals in the foods. All right. To destroy us. All right. Just like they did in ancient Egypt, as we'll show you. The word seed, real quick, the word seed is Zerai. Okay. And when it's all said and done, you will all understand the importance of the Israelite man. That's how nations are continued, period. Even heathen nations. All right. Proof that 
nations are passed down through their fathers is Esau, Edom, as well as men of Israel dealt with women of the other nations. And as those those children came out, they were still declared to be all right of the particular nation of their fathers. Esau, Edom lay with a Canaanite woman and who came out. All right. An Edomite. OK, the word Zorai is seed, sowing, offspring, sowing, semen, virile, offspring, descendants, posterity, children of moral quality practitioners of righteousness okay zarai okay the fruit the offspring see to sow to scatter seed our seed will be scattered to become pregnant all right and they also do things and put chemicals in the food to ruin all right the uh, reproduction system of our women all right but the seed is what they're after. They're trying to destroy, all right, the Y chromosome, okay? Let's go to the book of Isaiah 44. I always bring this out. Isaiah 44. <laughs> Isaiah, the 44th chapter. And let's read this again here before we go there. Isaiah 65 and 9, I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell therein. So the, the, uh, the ties of us getting back to the Holy Land are rooted in the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob awakening in the latter days. See? Now, how do we know that that seed is still here? Well, prophecy is how we know. All right. And one of the main prophecies is here in the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter or the Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. So lucky. Like That's a good one, too. Well, let's go to Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. All right. Jeremiah, the 31st chapter is what I'm looking for. And. The 35th verse, thus said the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and the stars of a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me. See? Thus said the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth can be searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all they have done. You see, so we see the sun is in the sky. We see the moon is in the sky. All right. But what we do see is that the heathen have plans to block the sun. There's funny stuff going on with the moon, shooting missiles at the moon, you know, trying to block the sun. OK, putting all kind of chemicals into the atmosphere, trying to destroy the atmosphere. Talks of an artificial sun by the heathen. Look that up. OK. Artificial sun. In Korea, artificial sun sets record at. 100 million degrees in latest advance for nuclear fusion. China's artificial sun. Okay. What, what in the hell are these heathen doing? Well, it's, it's all a part of the plan that we just read. All right. In the book of Psalms. All right. Psalms 83 and 4. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Yashar Allah, Israel, be no more in remembrance. If the name of Yashar Allah is no more in remembrance, then we are no longer tied to the promise in his new creation. All right. His trans human ideology. All right. Flourishes. And ultimately, there will be no more physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They will then have transformed into gods, no longer be Edomites, no longer be 
Moabites no longer be any of the nations associated with the biblical narrative and they can overcome the most high X out his son. OK. And have cut off the nation of Israel from being a nation. See. Now, it sounds crazy. All right. It sounds crazy. But let's listen. To this video. All right. I know it's a bit all over the place, but such is life. We'll get the point. All right. The point will be made, Lord willing. All right. And you know, uh, uh, hopefully you're understanding as we're going to get into the tabernacle of David and what fulfills the tabernacle of David. All right. Well, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Judah and Ephraim awakening in the latter days. All right. And going through a process of humility, being humbled, awakening, repenting and ultimately being beamed up. If Esau can stop that, all right, by manipulating their inward and doing all of this wickedness, he can then block the blessing. Listen to this. This is off of an anonymous official. This is being deleted everywhere. I wonder why. Listen to it. Now we see here, all right, the WEF, and you could clearly see here the triple six, that loop going through those circles or those o's is the triple six which is the number of the man associated with this plan the man of sin the biblical edomites okay here with the finger sandwiches and the perrier talking about things like mind control what we're trying to figure out is how to decode the signals of the brain a future where they want to decode the signals of the brain why are they so infatuated with that because the brain is where the heavenly father deals with men okay why are they so infatuated with changing the d to the n to the is a because that's where man's story is written all right along with his spirit tied to him see this is what make us who we are and this is how we're identified by our spirits all right and our stories are played out on earth esau wants to change that okay sandwiches and the Perrier talking about things like mind control. What we're trying to figure out is how to decode the signals of the brain. A future where elites own us through our biometric data. Control of data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself re-engineer the future of life itself by what all right we we hear about this term human hacking we're seeing this this whole ideology of non-binary future okay a genderless future okay we're seeing all of this mix up with sex all right we're seeing men being effeminized we're seeing women being, we don't know what the hell they're doing with the women and the men. It's just, it's just a bunch of confusion. Doing away with gender, all right, is a plan to do away with nations as they are associated with biblical narratives. See? What they're trying to do, all right, is root out the biblical nations via pseudoscience and madness. Now, in the scriptures, Isaiah 44, and uh, let's just get to the point. Speaking to Jacob, all right, whose, whose name was changed to Israel, Isaiah 44 and 3, all right, well, what was promised unto Jacob, as a matter of fact? Real quick, let's get Genesis 35, all right, and this is a promise that cannot be broken. No matter how many Christians pop up trying to hijack Abraham, there's still Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes, and there is a promise associated with them. Let's put it all together. Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not any more be called Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel, Yashar Allah. He is a prince of the power. All right. Power to contend and govern. Okay, is within that name. It says, 
And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations, all right, shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Look up the word loins. Hmm. But somehow y'all think this diminishes the women. No. Women are, are very important. All right. But the seed of the man is what determines a nation and a nationality. All right. Chalataza. The seat of fertility. All right. The seat of fertility. What is fertility? Semen viral, loins, ball sack. Look up virtility, vir, vir, virility. All right, let's look it up. See what it says. The seat of virility, semen viral. Okay, the seat of that is the loins, the the uh, the ball sack. Okay, that's where the legacy of all nations lie. The patriarchs. The promise is tied. To the seed, manliness, masculinity, manhood, which, I mean, uh, the, the testosterone is all low because of what's in the food. Men are, are, are weaker. This is a plan. Okay. The quality of having strength, energy, and a strong sex drive, manliness, aggression, which masculinity has been deemed toxic in this world. Why are they so dead set on destroying manhood and men? Hmm? Well, this lesson is going to give you an insight to that without going too far, Lord willing. Now, it was promised unto Jacob a nation and a company of nations are going to come out of his loins and kings as well. And the land that I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land, and to thy seed after thee. So don't let these devils fool you into believing, all right, that physical seed has nothing to do, all right, physical seed and bloodline has nothing to do, all right, with the promise the Lord made. It does, see? But amongst that physical seed, as the scriptures tell us, Israel will be as the sand of the sea, but a remnant of Israel will be delivered. And that is fulfilled in the 144,000 and the large multitude. Those are Israelites, all right, that are what? Fulfilling the promise that was made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we would have that land. And it's the same word, offspring. See? So that promise that was made to Jacob, all right, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the, the 12 sons, all right, which are the patriarchs, all right, in the latter days, all right, it says here, Isaiah 44 and 2, thus saith the Lord that made thee, and see, this is all fulfilled through Yahweh Shai, it's through faith in Yahweh Shai that the seed will be accounted, and this is why we are awakening in these latter days to fulfill this very promise. Thus said the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, and my servant, and thou, Yashawan, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, the Holy Spirit, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. See? I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thine offspring. This is a promise. See? And Esau tries to confuse you with all of these different terms and, you know, uh, you know, and manipulations. But at the end of the day, we believe in what's written. And no, we don't have a DNA test to prove that we're Israelites. We're doing this thing based upon faith and we are fulfilling these very prophecies. All right, Taza, Tazayim, offspring produce issue, offspring of men, produce of the earth, descendants, okay, descendants. This is the promise that was made, that the descendants, all right, of the nation of Israel will spring up in the latter days via the Holy Spirit. That's the true DNA test, the Holy Spirit. 
One shall say, I am Yahweh's. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto Yahweh, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Which that is a fulfillment. All right, Isaiah, I mean, Amos 9 and 11. And that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and I will close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and build it as in the days of old. See? And he's going to bring again our captivity. He's going to bring us out of captivity and restore Israel, the restoration of Israel. Let's get Isaiah 58. See, but what does that mean for the heathen? If the tabernacle of David is rebuilt, what does that mean for the heathen? All right, Isaiah 58. And 12. And they that be of thee shall build the old waste places and shall raise up the foundation of many generations and thou shalt be called the repair of the breach the restore of paths to dwell in this is what we the servants the prophets through the spirit of yahweh through his son yahweh shai have been raised up to do restore the paths to dwell therein okay Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as the rebuilder of the walls and a restorer of homes. See, and that's fulfilled as we get prophecy. Ezekiel 37 chapter gives us foresight. All right. Gives us foresight. That ultimately there will be a reunion of Judah in Israel as we've been scattered separated starting with the Assyrian Empire you know pretty much after Solomon's reign which Solomon what did Solomon forward he forwarded the throne of David see he forwarded the throne of David man 40 years after that the kingdom was rent and that's where you get Judah and Israel Israel is the northern kingdom they went north. Judah is the southern kingdom. They went south. We were separated. And at the time of the Assyrian captivity, at the time of King Hezekiah, eventually the northern kingdom left the Assyrian captivity and came over here to the Americas and settled. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi went through the Babylonian captivity, the Medio Persian captivity, the Greek captivity. All right. in the Roman captivity and eventually were kicked out of Rome, scattered. All right. And on down the line, brought to the Americas on slave ships to meet up. All right. With the northern kingdom. All right. And there will be a great awakening. OK. Where Judah and Israel. All right. Which is the throne of David would be established. See. Now. Before we finish that, let's get the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. Let's get rid of a few of these scriptures so that we don't have a bunch of confusion here. Get rid of that. All right. What does Esau fear? All right. Revelation chapter 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And see, this is associated with the two witnesses, which is Judah and Ephraim. All right. The nation of Israel, as we would be separated. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. This is fulfillment of the dry bones. Right. The dry bones. OK. That are in the valley. Which a valley is a low land, the low land, the valley is America, Babylon, the great. See? Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And what is the great city when you go into the scriptures? Babylon the Great. See? Babylon the Great. All we have to do is just type in the great city Babylon and it'll come up. So we're going to show you what they fear. We're going to show you why they have dealt so wisely with us and trying to the, 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 the distract us and destroy us. And they're so fixated and, 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 and um, 
locked in on our, 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 our genitals and sex and trying to confuse us. Great city Babylon. Great city Babylon. Babylon is falling a great city. Great city, great Babylon. So the great city that the Israelites, all right, were the, 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 the major and final captivity, spiritual Egypt, is America. All right, and this is all written in parabolic and symbolism because only the elect are going to come to these understandings in the latter days. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. We were dead, separated from our power and judged according to prophecy, according to our evil doings, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, a freaky captivity. And boy, oh boy, can't, can't you look out now and see that this is a freaky captivity? Sodom is the freaky part. Egypt is the captivity aspect. Well, we uh, uh, the, the scriptures say you will be brought back into Egypt on ships. See. The bulk. All right. When you deal with Judah, Benjamin and Levi were brought over here. All right. But also you had northern kingdom that was on slave ships. OK. The, the, uh, the, the northern kingdom came over here. All right. On boats. Right. This is the book of Hosea 9 and 3. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria, in Assyria, in Egypt. Because remember, they left the Assyrian Empire. Assyria and Egypt is likened unto captivity when you go into the scriptures. OK. Let's see here. Just give you a quick example in the scriptures Egypt and Assyria is, 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 is symbolic of captivity and prophecy okay Isaiah 11 and 16 and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people which should be left from Assyria like as it was in Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt Assyria which the Assyrians were, were known for their mighty military. They were very oppressive. Esau, Edom is the modern day Assyrian. Okay. Another example. Isaiah 27 and 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. And they which come uh, shall come, which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and outcasts of the land of Egypt and shall worship Yahweh in the holy mount at Jerusalem. OK. Hosea 11 and 11, they shall tremble as a bird as we're going to be beamed up out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses. So this is all end time prophecy. I will bring them also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria. This is all end time prophecy. Egypt and Assyria speaks to America. And as we just read, Ephraim will return unto Egypt and eat unclean things in Assyria. And Ephraim, man, the northern kingdom, oh my God, when you look at their diet, especially the so-called Puerto Ricans, oh my God, pork is just is, is, is like they can't cook nothing without it. Anyway, this is the purpose of us awakening out of this dead state and understanding who we truly are. Revelation 11 and 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified spiritually all right manhood righteousness okay is is being crucified is being xed out and this plan that we're talking about is a part of that and they of the people and kindreds and nations and tongues shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer them to be put in graves and they that dwelt upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. What does this mean? These two prophets tormented them. Judah and Ephraim or Judah and Israel, as it says sometimes when they were together ruling. OK, what did they do to these heathen? Let's get some examples of what these heathen are actually fearing as the tabernacle of David is being boasted and being rebuilt. Let's get 2 Samuel. Why, why was Solomon able to have 40 years of peace? 
Well, because his father, David, beat down and subdued the heathen. Let's get a quick example here. When you read this chapter, it's David boasting and singing about the Lord delivering him from Saul and his enemies and giving him his throne. This is the book. All right. Of second Samuel 22 and 38. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. I have consumed them and wounded them. All right. That they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. Thou hast girded me with strength to battle them that rose up against me. Has thou subdued under me? So the tabernacle of David was rooted in the heathen being subdued under David. All right. In the 12 tribes, because remember, in second Samuel's, the fifth chapter. All 12 tribes. I believe that's where it's at. All 12 tribes acknowledge King David as king. As there was some infighting for a minute, but. David became king over all Israel. Okay. Second Samuel five and one, then came all the tribes of Israel unto David, unto Hebron, speaking, saying, behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. We agree in one. We're family. See. And they talked about how Saul was a king at first, but you let us thus. And ultimately, the Lord said unto thee, thou shalt feed my people Israel and be captain over Israel. So all the elders came to David, uh, unto the king in Hebron, where he was first crowned king. He ruled seven years in Hebron, 33 years in Jerusalem. Okay. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. So David became king over Israel. Right. By what? Subduing all of these heathen. Right. That we're reading about. See. <laughs> Let's get it real quick. Let's go back. Lord willing this. Uh, OK. Let's go back to Second Samuel's 22. OK. And then we'll show you a few chapters you can read to hear about. All right. Uh, and read about what David did. See, and what Yahweh Shai is going to come to do. And what they're trying to hide from you, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans is you Israelites. OK. Man, where, where do we start at? Let's see, teach of his hands to war. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them. That's where we started. Let's go down. Verse 40. For thou hast girded me with strength to battle them that rose up against me. Or hast thou subdued under me? All right. So the two prophets, northern and southern kingdom, agreed. They were they were all one under King David. And what were we doing to the heathen? Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save them. All right, even unto Yahweh, but he answered them not. They were even calling on Yahweh, make them stop. Lord, save us. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street and did spread them abroad. See, he stamped them as a mire of the street. Okay, he got the necks of his enemies. When you got your enemies next, they submit. Look at an MMA match when someone's being choked out, when they, they, they submit. All right. He beat them small as the earth. Thou hast also delivered me from the strivings of my own people. All right. Saul and his, his, you know, friends, his men. Thou hast kept me to be the head of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall serve me. See? Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient. Strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. You see that? <laughs> this is what, all right, David, all right, and the Israelites, his mighty men under him, his army. This is what they did. This is what they established. They established order by taking the heathen down. You can also get 2 Samuel, the eighth chapter. 
believe that's another chapter you can read to go into some of this history. Let's see here. I know 1 Kings, the ninth chapter kind of goes into some history, I believe. But um, David's triumphs, okay? He smote the heathen. Look what he did to the, the Moabites. All right, he smote the Philistines and subdued them, okay? And he smote Moab and measured them. <laughs> Let's read this in the, the NLT, verse 2, 2 Samuel 8 and 2. Just give you an example of what they mean by these two prophets tormented us so you can understand what they fear when we say the tabernacle of David is being rebuilt. How could that mean salvation for everyone when the tabernacle of David was rooted in this? David also conquered the land of Moab. He made the people lie down on the ground in a row. Imagine this. And he measured them off in groups with a length of rope. He measured off two groups to be executed for every one group to be spared. The Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. See that? So one group he will be will be executed and the other group will be spared. Imagine being in those, those, those Moabites at that moment. You were tormented. All right? You were tormented. All right, First Chronicles. The 18th chapter. All right. These are chapters you can read. You can read is more. I mean, that's just the, 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 the tip of the iceberg, but I can't go through every example of what David did to the heathen. Okay. But well, uh, let's check out uh, what David. All right. He slew the Syrians, the, the, the which are uh, of the seed of Shem. All right. But they're not the chosen seed. All right. He slew all of these heathen. All right. Let's see here. And it wasn't just David, it was his men. All right. Northern and southern kingdom. All right. First Chronicles 18 and 12. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zariah, Slew the Edomites in the Valley of Salt, 18,000. Slew 18,000 Edomites. And he put Gareth, is David breaking the not abhor Edomite law? Is he going off? And he put garrisons in Edom, had people watching over him. And all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So David reigned over all Israel executed judgment and justice among all his people see and see solomon comes on the scene you could also i believe first kings nine you could read some history there too write these chapters down read them get into this history we can't give you everything we're just giving you a roundabout all right we're giving you a uh a uh you know you can read this chapter no this this not the chapter but this is a good, maybe Second Kings 9, I don't know. But um, this is when Solomon comes. Now, what did Solomon do? He forwarded his father's throne. Oh, 1 Kings 9 is a good one. I'll go right back to that. 1 Kings 2 and 12, then Solomon sat upon the throne of David, his father, and his kingdom was greatly established. Why? Because his father subdued the heathen. So this is why Solomon was able to have 40 years of peace. See? And King Solomon shall be blessed and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. That's a future promise. But Solomon forwarded this throne for 40 years. see if we can find it maybe 40 without the u give me one second all right and you have to understand when you read acts the first chapter when the disciples are asking lord are you going to restore the kingdom of israel this is what they were talking about give me one second here i may have to take out the u All 
right, give me one second. Internet's acting up. But we're going to get through it, Lord willing. So I got some more, a few other things to bring out. Right. First Kings 11 and 42. At the time that Solomon reigned, and the time that Solomon reigned over Jerusalem, over all Israel, was 40 years. He forwarded the throne of David 40 years. Right. Now let's get First Kings 9 real quick to show you what Solomon did to the heathen. Now he dealt fairly with, you know, some of their elites, the elites of the, the heathen. You know, he was taking their daughters, you know, and eventually he went off. But when you get First Kings 9, let's read this in the uh, NLT. First Kings 9, and Solomon was winning off of what his father did. First Kings 9 and 20, there were still some people living in the land, all right, which David subdued them and took the land over. The land belonged to us anyway, but it's history. There were still some people living in the land who were not Israelites, including Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These were descendants of the nations whom the, the, the people of Israel had not completely destroyed. So Solomon conscripted them for his labor force, and they serve in his labor force until this day. But Solomon did not conscript any of the Israelites for forced labor. So he put their asses in slavery, and he put his people on and assigned them as fighting men, government officials, captains, and so forth, man. Okay, but eventually we know Solomon went off and this kingdom was rent and we became the northern and southern kingdom. See, this is why when you get Acts, the first chapter. In the eighth verse. As we had went through all of those captivities, the Assyrian, uh, the uh, the northern kingdom left the Assyrian captivity. But OK, when you read Daniel, the seventh chapter, it goes into the captivities that. You know, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi would eventually go through. And there were some of the northern kingdom still around, but they weren't there in a large number. It was primarily Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right. And this is what they asked Yahweh Shai. All right. As they were in the Roman captivity. Acts 1 and 6. So when the apostles were with Yahweh Shai, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? See, they were talking about the kingdom we just read about. Where, 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 let's get First Kings 4. Right? Let's get First Kings 4. See, this is what they don't want you to know. This is what the heathen are scared of. First Kings 4 and 20, the people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand of the seashore. All right? They were very contented, all right, contented. With plenty of eat and drink. They were eating and drinking and being merry in their kingdom ruling under King Solomon. See? So our forefathers always, all right, wanted this kingdom to be restored. But we would have to go through a process of, uh, of, of, of prophecy. In the final captivity, all right, the final captivity, all right, we would awaken out of a dead state. Right. And when we were in that dead state, let's read it again. Revelation 11 and 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, as we're in our final captivity. All right. Because what did the Lord tell uh, uh, his his men? I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit in the uttermost parts of the world. This is it. OK, the final captivity. See, when they asked him, are you going to restore the kingdom? Yahweh Shai said, the father alone has authority to set those dates and times. They are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the water upon the descendants. And you will be my witnesses telling the people about me everywhere, starting in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, when you look that up in the Greek. OK, to the uttermost parts of the earth. All right. That word uttermost or to the ends of the earth is eschatos. Extreme last in place, the last, the final captivity, last in temporal succession, last referring to time to the uttermost part, which is Babylon and great America, the ends of the earth. All right. Rank 
a, 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 gr a grade of work, the lowest, the ends of the earth. Okay. Which ultimately points to the final captivity of the Israelites where we will be dead bodies, dry bones. And while we are dry bones, it says, and the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their bodies three days and a half. All right, that 350 year period where they were able to ball, they were able to win. We were we had no idea who we were. We were just getting judged. They had free labor. All of the heathens were able to get rich off of the ignorance of the Israelites. All right, so they should see their dead bodies three days and a half. They would clap their hands, as the scriptures say, and not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They would just benefit off of our shame and wickedness. Okay, and create all of these cultures to destroy us. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry the heathen and shall send gifts one to another. Trade us off. All right. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. We just showed you an example of Judah and Israel, the two prophets tormenting these heathen. And the elites of these heathen know who we are. See? Why do you think they've dealt so wisely? Well, just like in Egypt, right? <laughs> it's like in Egypt. All right. Exodus 1 and 10. Let's start at uh, Exodus 1 and 9. And he said unto his people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. See? <laughs> this is in ancient Egypt. Now we're in the new Egypt. So the same mindset of the rulers apply. See, behold, the children of Israel are more mightier than we come. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they there falleth out any war, they will join our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, did they set taskmasters over, over uh, the Israelites to afflict them with their burdens. Right. And all of these heathen have been set up in our neighborhoods. All right. To push poison unto us. All right. To further destroy us. They're all financed by Esau Edom to set up businesses in your neighborhoods to further destroy you. So the heathen have dealt very wisely with us. All right. Knowing who we are. All right. Putting foods and, 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 and drinks and stuff in our neighborhoods that are directly opposed to us. All right. Flourishing. However, it did not work. All right. As you see here, <laughs> the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. The same thing is happening here. It's nothing they could do. All right. But we're not worried about the multitudes of Israel. It is the remnant of Israel who will receive the spirit in the latter days. See, and this is why they are trying to destroy that seed out of the earth. OK. So these 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 heathen were happy because these two prophets tormented them. All right. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God shall enter into them. That's around the 60s from 1619 when Judah, Benjamin and Levi were brought over here to meet up with the northern kingdom. All right. We went through our that judgment. All right. But after three days and a half around 1960, the spirit of life entered into them. Elijah, the prophet came Abba Bivens. All right. And from that point, that has led to what you see before you, the offspring of the children of Israel awakening. All right. Through the spirit. And they stood up on their feet and great fear fell on them, which saw them. What are they fearing? Why are they so scared of these dry bones awakening? <laughs> what are they so scared about? See, because ultimately the promise is that ultimately Ezekiel 37 and 13, and you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, when I have opened your graves. All right. O my people and brought you up out of your graves and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it. And we're starting to see those promises are coming to pass. But it's a reunion of Judah and Ephraim. OK. 
Ezekiel 37 and 19, as the 12 tribes chart is being prophesied, say unto them, thus said the Lord God, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and all the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and put it even with him, even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in mine hand on the 12 tribes chart and the sticks wherein thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. See, so everything that we are doing is fulfilling prophecy. And say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. See, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king unto them and they shall be no more two nations. We're not, not going to be separated. See, and that can only happen. All right. By coming together under Yahweh Shai. See, Judah and Ephraim can only come together, all right, under the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. This truth. Other than that, we'll be separated by gang violence, how we look, black, this, that. But, but, but see, in this doctrine, all right, Judah and Ephraim are reunited. Let's get that in the book of, uh, let's get the book of, uh, See, so the great fear fell on them which saw them. See, and eventually we're going to get beamed up. So the great fear fell on them because they, when we're, when we're talking about the throne of David is going to be established, the throne of David, the tabernacle of David being rebuilt, the elites of these nations remember what David did. We remember the spirit we were in when we had that. So they're trying to what? All right, they're trying to cut off the birthright, all right, by cutting off. All right, the 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 wire chromosome, and they're gonna come after us. Believe you me, they're gonna come after us. And an example of of them trying to destroy a seed is in Revelation the twelfth chapter. So lucky, I was gonna get something, but I'm gonna jump to this. All right, Revelation twelve and three, and there appeared a wonder in heaven, a great red dragon, which the red dragon is the Roman Empire. Having seven heads and ten horns. We always break that down. All right. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who were in that Roman captivity, were in Roman, under the Roman authority. They were vassals to the Roman Empire. And did cast him to the earth. To be cast to the earth, meaning you're low. Okay? Meaning you're in a, a low state. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And this goes into that history, which you can read that history by going to the book of Matthew, I believe the second chapter. OK, I believe that history. Is in Matthew, the second chapter where King Herod an Edomite. OK, how do we know he's an Edomite? Well, he was an Edomite, but his father is named Antipater the Idumean. Idumia is a uh, Greek way, I believe, of saying Edomite. These were Edomites, all right, doing the same thing these heathen, these Edomites are doing today, these small hats, saying that they're the true Jews, right? And many of our people bowed to that authority, but many of our people didn't. Why do you think John the Baptist was put to death? He was calling out those fake small, those fake Jewish people. Anyway, but King Herod wanted to devour the seed, which was Yahweh Shai, all right, so that he can cut off the blessing. You don't think that same mindset is here today as they see we're being raised up? They're going to try to cut off that seed. And why do they want to cut off that seed? And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to the most high into his throne. So he, he wanted to cut the Messiah off, right, which he couldn't so that he can block the blessing of him ruling over all nations with a rod of iron. See? Let's get the book. Let's get the book of uh, Psalms, the second chapter. This is what these heathen fear. One second here. Okay, I got to roll in a minute. As a matter of fact, I'll just pause it and come right back. Second, this is Psalms, the second chapter. 
Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us. All right. I'm trying to get around Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. See? It says in the NLT, let us break their chains, they cry, and free ourselves from slavery to the Most High. <laughs> they want to free themselves from the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai that his son, all right, which what did his son say? Okay. His son is coming to establish, all right, the throne of David as in the days of old. See, in a whole nother fashion, man. Okay. Where we're going to rule over you, heathen. Revelation, this is out of his mouth. This is to the church. This ain't to you, you weirdos. This is to the church, the true church. Revelation 2 and 25. But that which ye have, hold fast till I come. This truth. Keep faith in it. And he that overcometh and keeping my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father. So the heathen, all right, are trying to free themselves from that by this plan of an NWO and forming a new human. That way, the biblical narrative is done away with. Nations will no longer be. All right. Determined by the seed of their fathers, because we have a new human. We have transformed human. All right. We have trans trans. Hmm. What do you think this is all about? They're presenting it to you like, yeah, we want to, you know, make you better. But <laughs> there's a whole nother plan to that. See, <laughs> See, the, 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 the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were born into the earth to fulfill a great prophecy, which is going to end in them being under our foot, under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So they've put billions of dollars into all of these philosophies and doctrines and pseudoscience, all right, because they want to free themselves and cut the cords of being linked to the most highest judgment through his only begotten son. See, let us free. Let's, let's read that again. Psalms two and three, let us break their chains. They cry and free ourselves from slavery to the most high. They ain't trying to go back into slavery. See their, their rulerships were temporal. See, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. And they're, they're in derision now, but they're just getting ready to get worse. See, they're raging, talking about they're going to do this. They're going to do that. Hu hacking humans. All right. You look that up. All right. Oh, I forgot to bring this out. We'll go right back to that. Ha you know, the, the hacking, you know, the non-binary thing. All right. <laughs> oh wow human hacking audiobook human hacking see this is what these humans this is what they're talking about at these TED talks and the, the yeah listen to this this guy The really big thing is hacking human beings. To hack human beings, you need a lot of biological knowledge, a lot of computing power, and especially a lot of data. If you have enough data about me, and enough computing power and biological knowledge, you can hack my body, my brain, my life. You can reach a point when you know me better than I know myself. And once you reach that point, and we are very close to that point, then democracy, the free market, as we have, and actually all political systems, also authoritarian regimes, um, we have no idea what, what happens once you pass that point. 
All right, because they're, they're going to bring about a new kind of government, a new world. This is what this is all talking about, man. Why are they having conferences? <laughs> for, for security reasons. And, don't, and Jake is a part of it, too. Jake is going to help him, trying to help him. Hey, all of you, like, like we just read Psalms, the second chapter, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. This is a crazy plan. And have him in the risen. He shall, then shall he speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill. See? Yahweh Shai. They're trying to block him from ruling and establishing that throne. All right. Synonymously, they're here on earth trying to destroy Jacob in many ways, in ways we don't even know. See, he's allowed them to tap into the D to the N to the Is A and do these particular things, but. There's a there's a there's a God gene. He can't he is there's a, there's only so far he can go. I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. See, this was a decree from the beginning. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. This is what they're trying to get around. OK, this is what vocab is trying. They, they're all trying to get around the reality of their judgment. See, and our own people giving you an example. This is a video I loaded some years ago. I reloaded it some years ago. But it's called Why Did BLM Take This Down? Now, this was on BLM's website as their mission statement. OK. All right, but they took it down once people started to call it out. And I have proof because this was the website. But look what they say. Okay? Which BLM was started by who? We know Esau Edom, but who did he set up? He set up Eve. Okay? Three so-called black women who happened to be, all right, uh, Dizikes. Meaning they don't deal with men. I'll just put it like that. But look at the, the wording. Black trans women. All right. We build a space that confer, affirms black women as free from sexism, misogyny, and environments which men are centered. And that's what the black boule is set up to do. Push victimhood to you niggas, right? And it's not like we ain't been through anything, but they do it in a way that manipulates you and draws you into a very, very wicked Left-handed agenda, rooted in anti-Messiah. We practice empathy. We engage comrades with the intent to learn about and connect with their uh, context. We make ourselves family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires women to work double shifts so that they can mother in, uh, in private even as they participate in public justice. They're trying to dismantle a patriarchal system, but they're hiding it under women being oppressed. Really, they're trying to destroy the family. This is that Marxist garbage. This is what BLM was rooted in. Right? We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families in villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children. All right. To the degree that mothers, parents and, uh, and children are comfortable. We foster a queer affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intent of freeing ourselves from the top, the tight grip of heteronormative thinking. Got all these words. What the fuck is a heteronormative? Let's look. What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> heteronormative. We're going to look that word up because they put this here, but they took it down. And we're going to prove to you that that was on their website. That's what that video, and you can look it up. It's on uh, the Remnant Say 144 Ba. Come on now. Yep. Transhumanism is a political and scientific movement that aims to improve the human condition through the use of technology. What, what technology do you think that's going to end in? Well, John the Revelator. 
He told you about it. Hetero. Normative. See what this is. <laughs> Heteronormativity is the idea that heterosexuality is the normal sexual orientation and that people should conform to traditional gender roles and relationships. It's a social construct that is embedded in social societal instructions that can be found in many people. Uh-oh. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to destroy traditional values. They're trying to destroy, all right, because what is a heterosexual? What is a heterosexual? Sexually or romantically attracted exclusively to people of the other sex. So you have male and female. So this whole ideology called BLM, which our people are all into, as you can see, it's rooted, all right, in anti-Messiah, okay? And you can look at this video. You just have to type it in just like this, all right? Um, and, and, and this is on their website, okay? This page shows it, this, this video I did. See, they're trying to move past male and female. See, this was on their website. Okay, but they hid it under, you know, uh, marching for the the black man getting shot, George Floyd, all that. <laughs> but you see? <laughs> we make space for trans... All right, brothers and sisters to participate and lead. We are self-reflective and do the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege and uplift black trans folk, especially black trans women, who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic, antagonistic violence. See that? So to hell with male and female, which isn't that what the Heavenly Father set up? There you go. Genesis 1 and 27. So God created man in his own image, mankind in the image all right, of the Most High created he him. All right. And this is going into the, the lineages of Adam. But all nations are determined by male and female created he them. OK, Genesis 5 and 2, male and female created he them. This is speaking of those who he made in his image. All right. But everything. OK. All living flesh is determined by male and female. All right. Now you have particular species like worms and certain, you know, uh, snails that um, don't. I, I forget. It's certain uh, genderless, uh, you know, species like like I believe it's a certain snail or certain. But the majority, all right, of what the Heavenly Father has on earth is determined by male and female, even trees, even the seeds that are, are, are uh, ultimately um, in fruits. It all spreads after its kind by the seed, all right? And what is he doing with the seed? He's making what is called terminator seeds, okay? What is a terminator seed? What is it? What is the Terminator seed? Or what is type in? What is a Terminator seed? A genetically engineered seed that produces a plant whose own seeds are sterile. See? So it doesn't produce anymore. So after that crop dies, you have to go back to him to get those seeds. Well, imagine if he's able to do that with humans. <laughs> and Monsanto is behind this. See, this is a, a ploy to make them God. But imagine if they were able to do this with humans. See? This is the book of Matthew 19. 
I just Mark 10 and 6, Yahweh Shai speaking. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. See? So, so if he's able to destroy the Y chromosome, see? He's able to destroy the patriarchy. Okay? What is a patriarchy? Oh, damn. It said define. Must be something new. Let me go back here. A system or society and government which the father or eldest male is the head of the family and the descent is traced through the male line. See? Then now we show you that in the Bible, all right, we are no, the, the fathers of the promise are determined by the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. The promise God made unto our fathers. This is what Paul says. And now Acts 26 and 6. And now I stand and am a judge for the hope of the promise made unto our fathers. See? Now. Let's see here. That's why the scripture said no flesh would be saved. If this man was able to to do what he wanted to do. No flesh would be saved. No Israelites would be here anymore. He would then have transformed past being an Edomite. The other nations be have transformed past being what they are through their science. And no flesh would be saved. All right. Mark 13 and 20 and accept the Lord have shortened those days. No flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake whom he have chosen, he has shortened those days so that Esau is not able to complete this plan. No flesh. Sark's flesh. flesh okay humans he's trying to destroy all that he's trying to interrupt the heavenly father's plan okay revelation 12 and 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of yahweh shai See, because right there is where the throne of David is going to be rebuilt. See? The remnant of her seed. Sperma. Okay? See, he did it with plants. He's doing it, right? But he, he's taking it further. Okay? A few survivors. The remnant. Residue. The remnant. Just as the seed is kept from harvest for the sowing. Semen viral. See? So he's coming after our seed, our posterity. All right? By doing all kinds of stuff, man. Okay? This man is crazy. Why are all of these foods out that have, that affect fertility? And yeah, it dis it disrupts all nations, but who's the nation they really after? Now you have to take all of this stuff that boosts fertility and I mean, and we know. I mean, you could just read these titles. What did that Jizab do? Hmm? Just read those titles. Kamala Harris vows to use taxpayer funds to pay for SX changes for illegal immigrants. These people are crazy, man. Read that. 
Planned Parenthood. That's a part of it. Okay? To offer free vasectomies and abortions. All right. <laughs> uh, read this one. Just read the title. We're going to close it out. All right. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully this, you know, was, um, you know, and this is not medical information. You know, we're just a... a we're just going through our experience as Israelites here in Babylon the Great, man. You devils have uh, have a plan. See? See that title? Anyway, we're going to leave it there. I think I had nothing else. I think that's it. Point was made. We're going to leave it alone. Shalom. <laughs>